stop telling yourself you're not qualified enough not good enough and not worthy enough growth happens when you start to do the things that you're not qualified to do Hi guys welcome back to my channel i am back with another video and another episode of the life in engineering series i'm always excited to do these engineering related videos purely because you guys give me such positive feedback when i post these videos so i'm happy to keep them coming for my people which is you guys that being said today's video is on five things that i've learned working as a chemical engineer the list is not going to be so chemical engineering focused, but rather lessons that I've learned as a professional in general. So it can definitely apply to other corporate environments as well. I've been working as a chemical engineer for almost four years now, and I've reached a point in my career where I'm wondering what's next besides the typical climbing up the corporate ladder. And since that's where my head has been at lately, I've kind of been forced to think about what I've gained this far, hence this video. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. But first, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the things and let's just get into it. Lesson number one, make sure that you're always managing or analyzing your stakeholders throughout your career. And a good way to do this is through a stakeholder map. I'll try to put up an example of what a stakeholder map looks like somewhere on the screen, but it basically helps you identify and assess the individuals in your career that are interested in you or have an influence on you or your career. I mean, we all do some sorts of stakeholder management on a daily basis when we interact with our managers, with our colleagues or our mentors. But I've recently found out that formalizing this is so beneficial. I believe it gives you a clear idea on who these people are and how to keep them close to you, how to manage them, how to keep them satisfied, how to keep them informed, which is very beneficial for your short term goals or your long term career goals. Lesson number two, you need to take charge of the direction of your career from the moment you step into the workspace. The path is pretty clear from preschool up until tertiary. There's not much thinking and planning you need to do to move from one step to the next. This has proven to be totally different in the workspace. I honestly got stuck in doing the day to day tasks that land up on my desk at work and thinking that doing these tasks and meeting my KPIs is enough. But I recently realized that this might not be enough to get to where I want to be. Honestly, I started asking myself, do I even know where I want to be? And the answer wasn't clear. And that makes it no surprise that I don't even know what steps to take on a daily basis, what actions I need to be, you know, tackling to make sure I get to where I want to be. That being said, it's time to learn more about myself and more about my career aspirations. That way I can take the steps that I need to take on a daily basis to make sure I'm getting to where I want to be. Which brings me to lesson number three. Upskilling is so important. Make sure that you're learning a new skill weekly, if not daily. Upskilling really makes it easier to adapt to changes in your environment, in technology, in the people around you, which is so attractive to an employer. It's also important for career growth and job security. Lastly, it also just makes you more efficient and productive as an employee. Again, it's easy to get stuck in the day-to-day -day activities, but my new goal is to make sure I'm more conscious about the skills I'm gaining or I'm improving on when I'm doing the tasks that I'm doing. And if there's a lag in upskilling, it's time I look for the opportunities to gain more skills. Lesson number four, find a mentor or someone who can guide you through your career. I really didn't see the value in this at the beginning of my career like I do now. Maybe I was just scared to go through the process of looking for a mentor and actually finding a one that matches what I want. But I now see that having a mentor can give you valuable insight into information or spaces that you want to be in. And it can also help you build your network, which is important for career growth. 
and have as many mentors as you want. Perhaps each mentor will offer something different. Lastly, lesson number five, it's okay to make mistakes. That's pretty much it for this lesson. I'll actually share a quote with you guys that my mentor shared with me earlier today, which reads, stop telling yourself you're not qualified enough, not good enough and not worthy enough. Growth happens when you start to do the things that you're not qualified to do. And that's it for today's video. It's a short video, but I really wanted to get straight to the point. I want you guys to get something valuable out of these videos. And if I'm going on and on about things that don't matter, you won't get the point. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please, again, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, you know, do the things. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.